Hi, this is your weekly wrap up for Friday, June 28th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share so others can gain from the knowledge you have. And please do, if you are watching already, please just do subscribe and add, uh, click onto the weekly notification buttons. You can customize it so you can see specific videos that you want to see as soon as they come out. <clears throat> While strapping, folks, we have a lot to cover today, even more than last week. So this could take a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this past week's shows, we had Dave Champion focusing on the common law trust, uh, separating fact from fiction and giving some of the nuances associated with them. Uh, Ian from Perium with a new menopausal solution for women. Andy Sheckman talking about the latest financial updates and geopolitical happenings as they all combine and correlate. Uh, this next week, we'll have a short week, obviously, with the Independence Day holiday. We'll have SG and on on. And then we're not going to have a weekly wrap up next week in observance of said independence holiday. Uh, so it'll give you folks a chance to spend time with friends and family as you would normally do and need to in these particular times. <clears throat> so in lieu of that, I will give you the shows for the week of July 8th. We will resume the wrap ups on July 12th. So for the week of the 8th, we're going to have Gregory Manorino. We have the newcomers, Mark and Daniel Ray, who will be talking about precious metals. Many of you wanted to focus on that specifically. Um, how to buy them, liquidate them, uh, which ones to have from a collectability standpoint, newsmatic, et cetera. They're going to be covering all that in ways that you can make passive income if you're wanting residual income or if you've lost your job, unfortunately, altogether. This could be uh, a possible replacement or at least uh, subsidize some of the loss that you're experiencing. Uh, Bill Holter will be back and then Dave Champion will be coming back on part two, how to lawfully not pay taxes. And then uh, Jim Willie, who's always a spirited guest, will have him exclusively on Rumble. So we will give you a special preview clip on YouTube, but that's just to bring you over to the Rumble side, just to be clear. Okay. So here's the headline news. <clears throat> WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange earlier this week pled guilty to a conspiracy charge as part of a plea deal with the U.S. Justice Department that has now allowed him to go free after spending illegally five years in a British prison. According to court documents, he's now in Australia, and then we will see how that plays out in the near future. Job losses across the tech, tech sector have nearly reached 100,000 year to date, according to the tracker layoffs. While the rate of layoffs in the global tech sector is not as rampant as it was last year, it outpaced layoffs going back to 2022. More than 340 tech companies have been laid off a total of 99,672 employees since January 1. More than 260,000 tech positions were terminated throughout 2023, while 165,269 were cut in 2022. TikTok begins down, winding down positions in their layoff process. Uh, owner of the social media app Sensation TikTok has reportedly slashed its global workforce by nearly 2,000 uh, employees over the past quarter. Earlier this month, it reduced its Indonesian employee count by 450. A local home, Hallmark uh, location, Wayfair Chapel in Rancho Palos Verdes, which has been around for many, many years in the South Bay area here in California, is going to be officially torn down and gone by Monday, July 1st. After being shut down for months due to landslide damage, the chapel is going to be dismantled and put in storage. The executive director told the local Daily Breeze that the focus is to shift to preservation. Rebuilding the landmark could cost up to $20 million. This followed a report in May. The Chinese-based company planned to reduce the number of employees. Again, going back to uh, TikTok's global user operations, content, and marketing teams by 1,000. Now, they also additionally laid off 250 to 300 employees in Ireland back in April. Earlier this month, a report emerged that Microsoft planning to cut as many as 1,500 employees working in its Azure cloud division. Uh, the video game industry also announced several massive layoffs earlier in this year, what has become an increasingly volatile sector. For example, Sony said in February it was laying off 900 employees in its PlayStation division. After careful consideration and many leadership discussions over several months, it has become clear changes needed to be made in order to continue to grow the business and develop the company, said former PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan. Ryan also uh, retired from his position last month. Electronic Arts has eliminated 5% of its workforce, which equates to about 670 positions. 500 Texas truckers to lose their job after a company shutters without warning. A truck and logistic companies has abruptly shut, affecting 2,000 workers just three years after being bought by private equity. 
out of the blue staff at U.S. Logistics Solutions were given news um, on Thursday that they were being put out of a job and would not be getting their paychecks on Friday. Filing Chapter 11, uh, the Pittsburgh-based specialty retailer filed in Delaware on Thursday, listing assets and liabilities worth between $100 to $500 million. The retail crisis continues as bankrupt Rue 21, the famous retail store, closes 540 stores nationwide. Uh, one longtime staple of American mall retailers has closed its doors and filing for bankruptcy called Third Time Unlucky. The filing closures last week will be a surprising to a minority of people as this is the third time the retailers filed for bankruptcy. First time was uh, Chapter 11 in 2002, back when the company operated under the name Pennsylvania Fashions, and the second filing in 2017. Hooters has closed 40 locations across the U.S. The primarily known chicken wing restaurant has shuttered a number of restaurants in 14 states, excuse me, uh, not 14 states, uh, citing pressures from current market conditions. In total, like once again, 40 restaurants have closed in the recent months. Uh, the company confirmed its closures in a statement to Nation's Restaurant News. Uh, U.S. Logistics Solutions, formal, formerly Ford Air Solutions, is doing anything but moving forward. On Monday, they filed for Chapter 7 on June 21st after being notified by the lender it no longer can receive the necessary funding in order to continue operations. USLS had facilities in Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Iowa, Maryland, Michigan, and other states. Since the 1960s, Six Flags has grown to become the world's largest theme park at one point, operating over 37 parks around the world. Uh, their parks were beloved from the original property Six Flags over Texas to others like Magic Mountain and Great Adventure. But after a series of terrible decisions, the company failed to make even the slightest profit margins and ultimately declared this month bankruptcy. In doing so, they have left their parks demolished or abandoned in their wake. If you have a bank account with Chase, your favorite branch may be closing in 2024. Throughout the year, Chase plans to close at least 23 branches across various states with some closures possibly already in effect. At the same time, Chase plans to open 400 branches in 25 new states. The closures impact communities in nine states, although the specific bank branches that will close have not yet been identified. OKA, a popular furniture store based in the West, filed for Chapter 7 this week. Patisse, an orthodox kosher cafe and bakery, has officially filed Chapter 11. AutoNation and other car dealers hurt by CDK cyber attack as outage persists. Tesla's 700 job cuts uh, send shockwaves through Nevada's economy, according to the Mechanic Insider. After announcing plans to reduce 10% of its workforce, Tesla's shared the next location for massive layoffs. A family-run haulage firm that has been in business for 80 years has closed with the loss of over 100 jobs. Cartwright Brothers Haulage Limited, based in North Hykem, uh, was, set, uh, was set up before shortly the end of World War II in order to meet demand across the agricultural sector. The firm, which is entire entirely entered administration said it had been hit by rising costs as a result of the pandemic. A Southern California staple is shutting its doors after nearly 30 years. Sunday is the final day of business. Uh, this Sunday, the 30th of June for the Pasadena, California location of Roscoe's, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. A sign on the door of the North Lake Avenue restaurant says the chain is looking for a new place to open in Pasadena. Walmart, the retailer, has already closed 11 stores across the U.S. in 2024 due to a variety of issues, including underperformance. It also made the decision to close 51 health clinic locations and sunset its entire health division. Big Lots set to face Chapter 11. In a call this week, CEO Bruce Thorne called out that his company lost money for yet another quarter, losing $132.3 million in Q1 of 2024, which is nearly $100 million more than they lost in quarter one of 2023. He explained what happened, saying that while we have made substantial progress on improving our business operations in Q1, we missed our sales goals largely due to a continued pullback in customer spending by our core customers, particularly in high ticket discretionary items. Psych Center Mall says goodbye to another retailer after sudden Maurice's closure. Uh, Perion Network layoffs are coming for the company's employees as it seeks to streamline operations. Perion is cutting 35 jobs from its Israeli search division. This represents roughly 15% of the workforce in that country. 
The change comes in order to seek and reduce operations amid sliding revenue. Ginkgo Bioworks layoff continues today with the cell programming company announcing additional job cuts. The latest update to the Ginkgo Bioworks layoffs reveals that the company is planning to cut at least 35% of its workers. This comes out to roughly 400 employees based on the last total headcount of 1,218 people. Walgreens is set to close a substantial number of its roughly 8,600 locations across the U.S. as the company looks to reset the struggling pharmaceutical change business. 650 stores will be closing in July. The company didn't announce a significant or specific, rather, number of store closures, but it said on Thursday that it is planning, quote, significant closures of underperforming stores across America as part of a multi-year optimization program company fires 500 truckers overnight despite business surge. According to U.S. Logistics Services, McDonald's could be leaving California with 80% of Americans unable to afford fast food, citing it as now a, quote, luxury item. McDonald's and other fast food chains have raised their prices for several reasons, including the minimum wage hikes in California, as well as attributing the high cost of living. While this might help these companies maximize profits, it doesn't help struggling Americans who can no longer afford fast food. As a result, they will be leaving California. 48 Subway restaurants at risk uh, filing bankruptcy. A Subway franchisee which operates 48 restaurants has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, putting the locations at risk of closure. A Texas-based River Subs last year lost a $3 million wrongful death lawsuit after one of its restaurant's managers was shot and killed by her ex-boyfriend outside of a subway in San Antonio, Texas. Boeing has offered to acquire Spirit Aerosystems Holdings in a deal funded mostly by stock that values its key supplier at roughly $35 a share, according to Bloomberg News reporting on Monday, citing people familiar with the matter. This is reported by Julian Saderwaite. Bank of America branch closing in Texas in the coming months. Taking into account that the closure announcement must be made at least three months in advance, we can estimate that April bulletins include information on the Bank of America branches that will be closing beginning of July. Semiconductor and software solutions company Pixelworks said on Thursday that its board has approved a restructuring plan, which is expected to result in a 16% reduction within the workforce. The layoffs are estimated to take place in operations, research and development, sales, marketing and administration. Travis Scott was arrested in Florida. The 33-year-old rapper was arrested at the Miami Beach Marina early on June 20th, according to CNN. He was booked into Miami-Dade County Jail at 4.35 a.m. Scott faces disorderly intoxication as well as trespassing charges, according to jail records. Police say that while the rapper was on a charter boat, there was an altercation with the crew, at which point the officers were called in. Scott reportedly left, but then returned. He had a dispute with the crew a second time. When asked to leave again, he refused, which resulted in his arrest. A $650 bond was posted for the rapper. Scott gained notoriety for his 2018 album, Astroworld, which received a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album. His newest album, Utopia, was also nominated for the Best Rap Album. Scott is father to two children, both of whom he shares with Kylie Jenner. At the time of this broadcast, here are the latest on precious metals and Brent crude. Gold holding at $2,337.70, silver at $28.89, Brent crude oil, $85.96. So a good buying opportunity if you can spot the market. Now on to notable deaths and resignations. King Charles III cannot fully fulfill his duties due to cancer. The 75-year-old monarch has decided to resign from and get another prestigious role. He has not yet asked the heir to the throne, Prince William, to stand in for him. Few expected such a move. Although King Charles III official coronation took place in May of last year, he ascended to the throne earlier on September 22nd, 2022, following the death of Elizabeth II. The aristocrat likely did not expect that he would soon have to make difficult choices, breaking longstanding traditions. Willie Nelson has canceled, canceled another tour of performance this, site, this time citing no return date at the age of 91. Neil Young and Crazy Horse announced a big unplanned quote unquote break and definitely postponing the remaining dates of their Love Earth tour. 
This move came after the band had to call off the show in Chicago on May 23rd, a few hours before it was to begin. Two more concerts were called off that week as illness cited for the reason. On Wednesday, hours before he's supposed to appear on stage in Virginia Beach, a note was shared to Nelson, Willie Nelson's social media pages informing the fans that he would not be performing. George Stephanopoulos becomes the latest in Good Morning America team to step down from the show, marking his absence in the latest installment of the morning news show. Another Paramount Global exec is out the door, Anais Lemperur, as serving as the CFO of the company's Pluto TV for more than four years is joining Hallmark Media as the chief financial officer. This is Rome, uh, Emilia Romagna, Governor Stefano Bonacci announced Wednesday that he will quit in two weeks time after being elected as the MEP for the center left Democratic Party in this month's European elections. 57 year old who has been at the helm of the region since 2014 said he will stand down after Bologna hosts the Science and Technology G7 event on July 9th to 11th. It's been a complicated 10 years, Bonnie Chi said. Lemperur is set to officially join again Hallmark Media now in August. She will be based in the media studio office, according to Jim Shea, executive VP and CFO for Hallmark. In this role, she will oversee financial operations, which operate three cable networks, Hallmark Channel, Hallmark Mystery, and Hallmark Family, as well as Hallmark Movies, a subscription-based streaming service. Now on to the deaths. The TV news anchor, 63-year-old, joined fellow co-hosts Michael Strahan and Robin Roberts, both of which have taken time off this week. Uh, on June 26th um, edition of the show, Rebecca Jarvis took center stage on the anchor's news desk, flanked by GMA Weekends, anchor Gio Panitas, and Lindsay Davis. Uh, roughly six months after the Queen Marguerite of Denmark abdicated the throne in favor of her son, Prince Frederick, uh, now King Frederick, another European monarch has announced his stepping down in more details when it is to occur. According to the Daily Mail, Luxembourg is in shock after Grand Duke Henri announces his abdication plan, saying son Prince Guillaume will start his takeover of the throne later this year. Sarah Becker, a reality TV pioneer for her role in season five of MTV's The Real World, has passed away at just 52 years old. Acclaimed former RTE journalist Tommy Gorman has died at the age of 68. Gorman from Sligo worked for RTE for more than 40 years and was its northern editor at the time of his retirement in 2021. The married father of two had been diagnosed with cancer in 1994. Becker's relatives informed TMZ on Sunday that she had died by suicide early this week at her home in Illinois. She had relocated there last year to care for some loved ones, but intended to move back to California. Kinky Friedman, the eccentric, the eccentric country singer songwriter whose musings, novels, and one-liners and quixotic gubernatorial run made him a folk hero has died at the age of 79 at his home in Texas. Uh, Friedman stepped on a rainbow at his beloved Echo Hill, surrounded by family and friends, a statement on X announcing his death read. Kingster endured tremendous pain and unthinkable loss in recent years, but never lost his fighting spirit in quick wit. Kinky will live on as his books are read and his songs are sung. Al Schultz, makeup artist on TV shows such as The Carol Burnett Show and Good Times, has died June 19th at his home in Long Beach, California. He was 82. Born in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin in 42, Schultz played professional football at the University of Missouri until a knee injury ended his sports career. He then moved to Hollywood, initially working as a grip and camera dolly operator before finding his passion in makeup artistry. Sheikh Saleh al-Shabibi, the 109th successor in a lineage dating back centuries, passed away on Saturday at the age of 82. He was the 77th family member to carry on the tradition that began with Uthman bin Talha, a companion of the Prophet Muhammad. As the key holder, al-Shabibi was responsible for the maintenance of the Kaaba, repairing its kiswa, which is the cloth covering, and overseeing various related tasks. His role was crucial in preserving the sanctity and upkeep of one of Islam's most holiest cities. An Omaha woman is honoring her late husband on the anniversary of his death, which is also their wedding anniversary. Therese and Johnny Mae Davis had just said I do on June 19th, 2023, when the newlyweds exited the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Omaha to take pictures of family. 
That's when at 4.35 p.m., the 48-year-old groom's heart stopped, according to local news reporter KCCI-TV. His cause of death was later determined to be a blood clot. Three News has now reported. Lazelle Vaholin, who, along with her husband, TJ Vaholin, owns the popular pasture of Balmoral Cafe, which overlooks family-friendly Balmoral Beach in the northern Sydney suburb of Mossman, passed away on Monday after succumbing to bone cancer. The Olympics uh, 2024 held to be in Paris, where a young Jackson Wright was set to compete. Sadly, he suffers from a suspected shallow water blackout, according to his father. He passed away weeks before the big event. Uh, Jackson James Wright, lovingly called JJ, uh, died in Fahola, Tonga on June 15th, his father, Darren Rice, told the local media. He was set to represent the southwestern Pacific County of Tonga. The country consists of 170 islands, and JJ was set to make history as the first Caucasian to represent Tonga in the Olympics. Unfortunately, JJ had been free diving from a boat when a tragic accident happened. It's believed he lost consciousness due to cerebral hypoxia in shallow waters. Presumably, it happened towards the end of a breath hold dive in shallow water, according to the NLM, typically caused by hyperventilating just before a dive, which lowers the carbon dioxide level level dioxide level and delays the divers urge to breathe his body was found minutes later but attempts at resuscitation proved unsuccessful legendary boxer roy jones jr has announced the death of his son deandre by suicide he was just 32. jones jr 55 posted the tragic news on social media on monday unfortunately my son deandre took his life on saturday jones wrote we would appreciate privacy and discretion in this matter Donald Ray Horton, whose company has built a million homes, dies at 74. Horton di died May 16th in Fort Worth, Texas. The cause is believed to have been a heart attack, a family spokeswoman said. His survivors include his wife of 52 years, Marty Horton, two sons, and four grandchildren. Influencer Farah El Khadi dies at 36 after a suspected heart attack. <clears throat> she had 1.1 million followers on Instagram. Gaelic Games' Michael O. Muratai has died at the age of 93. The Kerry-born commentator was the voice of GAA on RTE from the 1980s until he retired from broadcasting in 2010. His first commentary assignment was to provide an all-Irish commentary on the 1949 Railway Cup final on St. Patrick's Day. David Turner, a former WWD and Hearst Publications photographer, died June 8th at the age of 64 a man of multiple talents whose exacting nature applied to such other pursuits as teaching, baking, and trumpet playing, Turner was not inclined to do anything half-heartedly. In what was a 17-year run as a staff photographer at WWD that started in 1989, Turner's specialty was portraits of high-profile designers such as Ralph Lauren, Carl Lagerfeld, and celebrities like Audrey Hepburn and Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. That tenure, which, assigned, which included assignments for W Magazine, wound down in 2006 with his departure to Hearst Magazines. There, Turner was a staff photographer fielding assignments for Harford's, Harper's Bazaar, excuse me, Esquire, Town and Country, and other titles. Rob Stone, who co-founded Cornerstone Agency and The Fader, died Wednesday, um, and his family co-CEO John Cohen wrote on social media, Stone had been living with cancer, but kept his diagnosis private, as family said he was only 55. A father's paid tribute to his inspirational 19-year-old daughter who died from cancer months after being forced out of their flood-hit home. Emily Eden was undergoing chemotherapy in hospital when her family's house in Clay Cross near Chesterfold in Derbyshire was deluged with water during Storm Babbitt in October. She spent two months living in a hotel room before she was able to move back in time for Christmas. Miss Eden died at her home on the 27th of May. Haviland Smith, who helped CIA officers avoid detection, dies at 94. Tom Van Armberg, a former KEDC executive in Los Angeles who helped boost the careers of Regis Philbin and Paul Moyer, died Monday at his home in LA. According to Tuesday Media Reports, he was 83. Bill Cobbs, the veteran character actor who became ubiquitous screen presidents as an older man, died on June 25th. He was 90. Mr. Cobbs died in his home in Inland Empire region of East Los Angeles. His publicist, Chuck I. Jones, said no cause was cited. 
A Cleveland native, Mr. Cobbs acted in such films as The Hudsucker Proxy, The Bodyguard, Night at the Museum, and many more. He made his first big screen appearance on a fleeting role in the 1974's The Taking of Pelham 123 and went on to amass some 200 film and TV credits. Russell Marash, who created long running WGBH series This Old House and was a frequent Julia Child collaborator, has died. Marash died at the age of 88 on June 20th. He was originally hired as a camera operator at public broadcaster G. GBH in 1958 before becoming a producer and director. As the temperatures rose in southern Pakistan, so too did the body count. The Edhi Ambulance Service said it usually takes 30 to 40 people to the Karachi city morgue daily, but over the last six days it has collected some 568 bodies, 141 of them on Tuesday alone. It's too early to say what the cause of death was in every case. Judith Whalen, the editorial director of the ABC and a former editor of the Sydney Morning Herald has died of, at the age of 63. Whalen died at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney on Wednesday afternoon following a seven year battle with cancer. Bodybuilder Cynthia Goldani has died at, at just 36 after suffering from a blood clot in Brazil as tributes poured in from loved ones and the sporting community. <clears throat> Goldani who hailed from Rio Grande do Sul was confirmed to have passed away as a result of pulmonary embolism. Dr. John McDougall, known for inventing the high starch vegan diet, has died at the age of 77. His family confirmed passing peacefully in his sleep on Saturday, June 22nd. With a heavy heart, we share the news of Dr. John McCall's passing a statement from the family read, describing him as a visionary physician, an author, beloved husband, father, grandfather, brother, mentor, and friend. Okay, now that we've covered all that, and I apologize for some of the uh, mispronunciations, some of them are more difficult than they might appear. A lot of news to cover there, so thanks for listening. Okay, so here's my commentary to you folks for the week, and it's considerably shorter. Years ago at a job, I had an operations manager back in the East Coast say to me at one point that people can handle anything as long as they know it's coming. And as simplistic and as accurate as that statement is and was, in thinking about it this week, the Holy Spirit prompted me with a question that was a follow-up counterpoint thought. Can they trust me, meaning the Lord, when they don't know what's coming? And then I was prompted to read Psalm 91, 7 through 8. Though a thousand fall at your side, 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. There's going to be three things, folks, that are happening throughout this year and the remainder of this year. It's been in process, and it will be a continuation thereof. And that is, one, the wheat from the tear separating. And that means a lot of things, believers from the non-believers, the truth tellers from the liars, uh, marriages that are equally yoked and ones that are not. Vindication. You will get vindicated for standing in the truth and standing your ground and holding the line when others did not. God will vindicate you for that. He has not forgotten. And most importantly, or I say equally importantly, things that we thought we would never see happen, happen. I think we're seeing that now, and we're going to see a continuation of that as time goes on. So my simple message to you is keep the faith. It will be rewarded. That does it for this week for all the wrap-ups, deaths, resignations, and many other things. Uh, as always, if something major comes out, we will let you know. Otherwise, enjoy the Independence Day holiday with your friends and family. Be safe. Um, you don't have to travel. I recommend staying locally because of this precipitous nature of things. And uh, we will see you on the next coming shows uh, for next week and the following week thereafter. Take care. God bless.